OK, so now what I'd like to do is take you through some of the new editing features in Premiere Pro CS6. Like I've said, the focus of this release has been squarely on improving the overall editing experience, the rhythm of editing, if you will. And Premiere Pro CS6 sees over 50 improvements designed exactly to achieve that. One of the key areas that we wanted to focus on was trimming. The more we used by fast, professional, keyboard-driven editors, the more of a requirement there was for us to rethink our trimming model. And we've really, really addressed that in CS6, having spoken to a lot of professional editors, getting their feedback, and ensuring that we've built a really powerful trim engine that uh, fits their needs. So let's have a look at what we've done. The first thing you'll notice is that we can now do this. This is a small but very important feature in CS6, the ability to select an edit point on the timeline. So first we're going to look at just timeline-based trim. So you'll notice I've selected this edit point. This is currently in a regular trim mode. With that edit point selected, I can now use my numeric keypad to dial in edits. So for example, if I wanted to just pull that edit back, let's say 15 frames, I can use my numeric keypad, hit the minus key, type the number 15 and hit return, and that's just pulled that edit back. So that's a quick, easy way to dial an edit in using the keyboard. Let's undo that. We can also select multiple edit points. So let's just select these three. And a nice thing about this is I can also trim with the mouse, of course. So if I pick these edit points up, you'll notice I'm pulling all of them in. Notice how we give you clear visual feedback on what's expecting there. Of course, I can put all these edit points in different trim modes. So there's various ways of doing that with keyboard shortcuts. But what you might like to do is just right click on that edit point, And that gives you your five main edit types. So let's put this into a ripple trim out edit mode. And now if I dial, let's say, a 20 frame edit, you'll notice that's going to ripple all of that media back and just change the duration of my timeline. So this is timeline driven keyboard trimming. And it's a really fast way of, of getting what you want to achieve. But of course, if you are wanting to really finesse an edit, you're probably going to be wanting to be able to play around the edit, see the outgoing frame, see the incoming frame, and really dial in exactly what it is that you're trying to achieve. So let's just play around this edit to see what we're dealing with. So we're cutting from the guy in front of the orange to the guy in front of the gray. And you know, maybe I just want to finesse that edit a little bit and make it uh, that bit smoother. So the first thing I'm going to do is put my edit into a rolling trim mode. And I'm going to do that by holding the control key in on Windows. It's the command key on Mac. And I'm actually going to hold the alt key in as well, because I only want to select the video. That's an easy way of just selecting the edit point on the video track and not selecting the audio. That gives me a really easy way to perform an L or a J cut. So of course, I can do this with a keyboard, minus 15. There's an L cut, very easy. But like I say, it's going to be very important as I finesse this edit to clearly see what I'm doing, the outgoing frame, the incoming frame, and really get what I'm trying to achieve. So what we can do with this edit point selected is double click on it to launch the program monitor into full trim mode. Now at this point, you'll notice that I have these little nudge buttons in the program monitor itself right in place. So I can use my minus 5 button to nudge that edit backwards. These buttons are fully customizable, so you can set the number of frames that suit your work. I can also, if I want to, hit this button to apply a default transition across this selection. But that's not really what I want to do here. The thing I'm trying to achieve is just get the edit really accurate. So what I can do is use the JKL keys inside here to move around and really finesse precisely where I want that edit to be. This is what we would call a dynamic trim mode, just being able to see in playback your edit decisions and make that decision by hitting the K key. Trimming is really powerful and advanced in CS6. I've only really scratched the surface here, but hopefully you can see we've spent a great deal of time making sure that we're offering a trimming model that suits every editor's needs.